Tip number two: Quantity of sample. There are several factors to consider when it comes to the amount of sample used for an analysis. First, how much sample is available. This helps to determine which absorptive gas can be used based on how much total surface area is available. The total surface area is calculated by multiplying the specific surface area by the sample mass. There should be at least one square meter of sample in the tube to obtain a reasonable nitrogen isotherm, and the minimum total surface area for krypton can be lower by two orders of magnitude than the minimum total surface area required for a nitrogen analysis. This means the sample size can be adjusted accordingly to certain needs, or switch the absorptive gas if the sample size is limited. Let's look at some examples. If there is a limited amount of carbon black sample, such as 30 milligrams, but it has a surface area of 20 square meters per gram, then the total surface area that can be added to the sample tube would be around 0.6 square meters. Which means it is no longer suitable for a typical nitrogen BET analysis. Therefore, krypton should be used as the absorptive gas for a reliable result. Another example presented here is an alumina sample with a surface area of 0.2 square meters per gram. If there is only a nitrogen cylinder available, then krypton cannot be used. In this example. There are 6.5 grams of sample, which gives about 1.5 square meters of total surface area. As a result, the isotherm looks great without showing any blank air, and it gives a nicely linear BET plot. These examples lead to another factor to consider, which is speed of analysis. Does the sample size affect the speed? The answer is yes. The higher the total surface area, the slower the analysis will be. Due to thermal equilibration having to reach first before pressure equilibration, this is important to know because the speed of analysis can be optimized by the amount of sample added to the tube, which leads to the next question: What's the minimum mass of sample that can be used for an analysis? If the mass of sample size is too small, then it will be more susceptible to wing errors. For example, there is an analytical balance with one milligram resolutions. And 20 milligrams of sample is being weighed on it. A 5% weighing error is being already introduced, so the balance resolution should be tailored properly to the sample mass. Also, if the sample is being backfilled with helium after the degas, the buoyancy effect of helium on the sample tube mass should be considered. It is best to backfill with nitrogen to account for the empty tube mass that was filled with atmospheric gases. Lastly, how much uncertainty is allowed in the result? This table found on TechTip 14 from Micromoretics shows the minimum surface area needed in square meters, with the maximum percent uncertainty. For example, if the sample with one square meter total surface area was analyzed on the TriStar 2 Plus with nitrogen on a 3/8 inch opening diameter tube, with free space measured. Then the maximum uncertainty of the data is 10%. For more details on uncertainty allowance, please visit the Micromoretics website and look over the tech tip number 14.